Today we're going to be installing a crank set and bottom bracket. It's going to be a threaded bottom bracket by FSA and a FSA crank set as well, has its own spindle. So we run into some issues and we're going to try and figure that out, um, no thanks to the directions. Welcome to Bike Teacher, my name is Arthur. We're a hands-on teaching school located in San Jose, California. Check us out, biketeacher.com. Right, so we just got this new FSA bottom bracket delivered. Gonna make sure that it fits this bike here. So we were making sure that it is a outboard style bearing. So the bearings are right in here. Threads are right on the inside, these two right here. So this is gonna be sitting, the bearings are gonna be sitting just outside the, the frame where this is the bottom bracket shell here. So exterior, exterior, we have threads. This bottom bracket has threads as well. thing we want to look for to make sure that this is the correct bottom bracket to match our crank set. It is an FSA. We have a crank set here. This is an FSA as well, Gossamer. We got a spindle here. So this spindle is bonded to this crank arm. The chain rings are removable. You can replace those as needed. But basically you want to measure the diameter of your spindle and you want to measure the inner diameter of your bottom bracket. So you might have some information here. Uh, it does state 24 millimeters, so most likely that is going to be the interior diameter here. So we can check that. So we're going to use a micrometer here. And open it up. You got two ends. These signs are a little tiny and, and more pointier. These are going to be for the inner diameter. We're going to be checking the inner diameter just like this. It's going to slide scale. And just get the tips of those little teeth or those pointers. Slide that up. 23.8, definitely gonna round that off to 24, because the next jump is probably 19 or something much bigger than that. And for the spindle, we're gonna use the other side of the caliper. And if you notice a shiny polished area here, that's where the bearing is gonna ride on for the left side, and then a shiny area here where the bearing will ride on on that side. And then here we have the splines that are going to attach to the other side of our crank arm. So we're gonna measure this shiny portion right here. And 23.8, sounds good to me. So that's definitely, these two are a match. So the other thing you wanna look for too, this bottom bracket did not come with it, but sometimes they're given spacers that will go along with the bottom bracket in case we need to space out the cup a little bit further um, on the left side or the right side. So hopefully, and we got some directions here, so we should state that there. So to see if we need spacers for this system, first of all, we're gonna measure the bottom bracket shell from one end to the other side, end to end, right about there. And this one's coming in at about 68.1. So 68 millimeters is good. Uh, the next jump would be 70 or 72, I believe. So this is good. So we're gonna check out our directions and see if they offer or want us to put any spacers in anywhere. All right, so sometimes you gotta search around. Yeah, sometimes they give you bad directions from the, the manufacturer, whether it's bottom brackets, derailers, whatever. Just maybe Google, research, hit maybe two or three different websites or you know whatever, YouTube channels, and um, make mine one of them. You can just come up with a good answer. Make sure everything, everybody's making sense and everything lands on the same page. We're gonna apply grease to the threads on the shell on both sides, and so we're gonna apply grease on both cups we got one cup here, one cup here. This green, which is pretty cool, they usually come in black. This is just a, uh, a protective uh, barrier. So when water leaks inside your frame, probably most likely from your seat post into the seat tube, gonna drain down. It's gonna hit this here. Instead of draining over to the bearings and uh, corroding from the inside, this plastic barrier will help. And if we pull this off, it's probably gonna have a little rubber o-ring actually this one it's got a little a little rubber on the inside plastic here so it's making good contact on the surface there that's going to permit or actually not permit water condensation to get inside and to 
contaminate the bearings from the inside of the frame. So I'm going to be using some Park Tool. This is the PolyLube 1000 uh, PPL-2. For those of you who are very technical, uh, it's a general all-purpose grease that we use for the majority of the bike. Um, it's fairly thick, definitely waterproof. It's great to add lubrication so when we do turn things in with thread, your torque setting is going to be much truer, less chance of things vibrating loose. If this was dry, all these threads were dry, they would feel like it's tight when you initially tighten it up, but over time it will start to vibrate loose. So you're not going to have or keep that true torque setting. So we're going to apply grease to both these areas. You can see there's a little green right in the middle of the threads on both sides. So most likely it's all dry. It's, it's pre um, added from the factory so it's most likely a thread locker most likely so thread lockers they offer a little bit of resistance when you start turning it in you're going to feel when you hit this section here typically it's it's blue You'll find blue thread locker from Loctite brand and Permatex, they offer blue. So blue is nice because you can break it free with a hand tool when you're ready to remove this. Um, other ones that are different colors uh, offer something a little harder and stiffer, so a little more permanent. So you would probably have to use um, heat to warm it up, soften it up, and then it would break loose. So I'm not a big fan of putting heat on my bike, especially if it's carbon right next to the frame yada yada, but this green stuff right here most likely um, <clears throat> have good uh, confidence in FSA that it's something that's breakable with a, a hand tool. I haven't run into anything uh, where we had any issues where I had different colors and um, it just permanently and most likely if it if it was a permanent it's probably going to come in a, in a wet form, have you applied and then it's going to dry over time. So right now we're going to lube this guy up. So I just cut a little square hole in this guy got a brush, you can use your finger, sometimes I do both. Um, I'm going to put a pretty good coat. I want the grease to go in between every single thread. You don't have to cake it on real crazy, but we do want to be liberal. This is an area where you're going to get a lot of uh, water down at the bottom. You're going over all the debris, rain, mud, water, stuff like that. So um, the more grease, the better. And if we have a nice true torque setting, that's recommended. Less chance of creaking, less chance of this getting seized in there. So that's pretty decent right there. Again, we don't need a lot of caked up grease because it's just gonna come off when we initially go to screw it in. And we're gonna have, uh, it's all gonna build up on the outside edge. We can go back and wipe it off. The cleaner job we do here, the less cleanup you'll have once it's installed. Yeah, we're gonna apply the same amount of grease on the bottom bracket shell of the bike. And again, we're gonna be pretty liberal. Get that grease in between every single thread. And threads, they're about uh, approximately an inch, inch and a quarter wide. And we just wanna get the threads. We do not have to do the entire length of the bottom bracket. We're just gonna do section on one side, section on the other. And if you have a bike stand, you can always rotate this bike upside down to make things easier. But 